Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. Today we're in a beautiful 34 meter, full aluminum, full custom yacht, Lady Lean, built by the Dutch shipbuilder Wim Wonderwall. Now what is particular about this yacht is that it was designed around a person who had to move around this yacht in a wheelchair. Now all the passages you know, throughout the yacht have to be wide enough, big enough to create an abstracted passage through the spaces. Now what is particular about this one is that she has a huge passerelle that obviously can turn left or right depending on where the boat goes, whether it be Mediterranean or maybe America, Bahamas, etc. Now here we have a huge sitting area so that it was a particular request from the buyer so that the whole family and guests could enjoy staying outside rather than inside. Now if you take a look here this is a formal dining area for eight people and the whole idea was to create first of all not only big space here, but also have it shaded. So it's naturally shaded by the upper deck and the upper deck is shaded by the sun deck. Now here we have side handrails that are not installed on the bulwark and on the side passages that we create obstructed view from inside out. Now here we have a formal dining area for eight people, a very nice decoration, light decoration. Now since the boat was designed to have double season for the Mediterranean and for America. You would have side boarding gates to get in and out of the yacht. Now on top of that, this yacht was designed to, to cruise in the northern seas and as you can see there are IR burners all around, not only on this deck but on the upper deck as well. Basically you can stay in the shade but when you're cruising in the cold north seas you always have these burners to keep you warm. Now let's get inside, I will take you around. Now the salon is really very beautiful and the Carlo Dillem had did a great job. You will see a lot of natural colors, you will see marble, you will see oak wood that creates a very nice combination with these sofas. Now as you can see, the thing that is missing and that you normally would have on this size of yacht is this formal dining area. Now we have it outside and that was a particular request. But not only that, there was another one and there's another formal area in the forward part of the yacht. Now here you have big panoramic windows on both sides. As I mentioned before, the handrails are missing on the top of the external passages wall walks, which creates an unobstructed nice view from inside out. Now let me take you forward to the dining area. Now before we enter this, this part, there is an elevator on your left side that actually goes from the lower deck to the main deck and to the upper deck. Now on this size of yachts that is a quite unexpected feature but still you have it. Here's the formal dining area for eight people. There is two big wine coolers, bar here, cafe station. Now when you don't want to see that for any reason whatsoever you still can close it and that happens quite quickly by pulling this sliding door out and boom you have a very nice sleek wall there with uh, nothing but well to me I would personally keep it open all the time because well you would probably want to enjoy the view of these things You really need a bit of time to learn how to do this thing of this a new yacht, but you know over time we'll learn to do to do it properly. So this area, as you probably understand now, is separated from the galley which is behind me. Now you can close it completely with having these doors and having another pair of doors on your left. So this area can create complete privacy if you need it, and when the weather outside is not really good. Now here is the galley. The galley has to be equipped with all possible equipment for longer cruises. Now I remind you that this yacht is full aluminum and has a range of 3,000 nautical miles at 12 knots. Now this, this is a pretty well furnished galley. You have all the melee equipment. You have a micro A slash oven in this place. You have a big oven in, the, in here. You have three burners. You have two huge melee fridges that are loaded with food now so we better keep them closed and of course there is a uh, dishwasher here on the left 
Now, always it's a good thing to have big panoramic windows, you know, to look and enjoy the view for the for your chef, because obviously on this kind of yacht, this is a very important member of the crew that you would definitely need. Now, here's another sliding door, so to make sure that no smell is coming from the galley into the main salon. Now here, obviously, we have a, a door to the uh, port side passageway. Of course, you need it for the crew to circulate around the boat independently because privacy is important. Here, uh, obviously, uh, what you would normally have on this size of yacht is the day head, which is quite comfortable. You know, there's a lot of leg space uh, in this area, uh, which a lot of people sometimes are complaining about because, you know, sometimes you have to go with compromises. In this case, there is not so many compromises, to be honest. Now, let me take you to the lower deck and show you the cabins. Let's go. Sorry, guys, you have to walk. Not my space here. Now, welcome to the lower deck. VIP cabin starts from this area here, and you'll suddenly see the coffee station, which is pretty which is quite a good feature to have, you know, when you stay on the boat for a considerable amount of time. If you follow me, this is the desk because obviously you need to work and you stay tuned, you know, and uh, uh, this is a very good feature as well. On the left, there is a walk-in wardrobe. And here, we get into the VIP cabin. And this is not a master cabin as it may see at first sight because, well, it's quite beamy, it's very huge, it's very voluminous. Now, the height of the ceilings here is 2.2, which is a considerable amount of height. Normally, you would have 2.10. And uh, this is another feature that this shipyard is uh, capable to offer. You have huge panoramic windows on both sides. So this is two meter wide, big bed, nice sofa. Now, one of the recent trends in, in uh, shipbuilding and uh, creating comfortable layouts is to combine the sleeping area with the bathing area so to say and this is a nice bathroom very well furnished they have a big panoramic window as well now on your right there's a shower cabin which has which bears basically the same features of interior design as the rest of the yacht now there's a nice bench all in marble very well decorated dark chromed accessories now here is the uh, toilet with a lot of leg space and the same chrome dark chrome details which are very nice now let me show you the other cabins and let's go to the bow part of the yacht. Now this is a decent VIP cabin, I should say. Huge panoramic window that you would probably see on a 40, 45 ish meter yachts normally. Lots of room, lots of space on both sides of the, of the bed. Now if you follow me here, this is a pretty decent size of a uh, walk-in bathroom. You know, lots of leg space, very well furnished. The layout is quite nice. And just like in other cabins, it bears the same, the same principles, the same idea, the same materials that uh, create very cozy atmosphere. Now, this is one of the VIP cabins on the starboard side, on the port side, that's completely symmetrical, offers the same amenities, offers the same level of comfort. As you can see, this is the same, uh, absolutely symmetrical, identical cabin that we've just seen. And here you have a wardrobe, so lots of space for longer cruising. Absolutely identical uh, bathroom that we've just shown you. TV, obviously. Let's move on to this cabin. Well, here you can use it for, kid, for your kids or for your babysitter or for your guests sometimes. Of course, here you will have quite a decent shower cabin, I should say. Well, it's even almost of this equal size of the, of the other VIP cabin, quite big. And now I think we're ready to go to the upper deck to show you the heart of this yacht, in this case, the master cabin and the wheel station. Now, obviously you have the elevator that comes up to the upper deck as well, throughout all the decks, this is pretty cool. You have flat floor all around. Now the brief of the owner was to have the master cabin on the upper deck, which actually you have. Now this is the, there is a bathroom, there is a separate shower cabin that, as you can see, there is no glass, so that uh, perfectly matches the whole idea. And you have a water closet on my left. Besides that, you have big panoramic windows on the port side, which, is, which gives you a lot of natural light coming in. And of course, the makeup table to prepare for a good day in the sea.
Now moving out of the bathroom, you'll immediately see big panoramic windows on my left, which adds to the uh, cozy environment that this yacht has. Panoramic windows over here on the port side, Panoram big panoramic windows on the starboard side, and here you go, we have the proper master cabin, decent size for, you know, for longer cruising. Now, the tricky part of having master cabin on the upper deck is that uh, owners have to stay here for a long time, they have to sleep well, they have to cruise in any kind of seas and uh, stay in comfort. Now, this yacht has two kinds of stabilizers, two Seakeeper Gyros 26 and thin stabilizers Humphrey, which are electric. So, the ship builder made sure that in all, in all kinds of seas you would still feel really comfortable. Now, another good feature of this yacht is that you have a, your private deck. As you can see, there is no staircase here. Your social life, your private life is completely independent, so no crew coming here. Now, this is really great, so that's like an open terrace that creates a good view outside, but on top of that, Nobody on the lower deck can see you, so that's another add-on to the privacy. As we mentioned on the main deck, there is a nice burner here, which warm you up when you're in the rough seas, and a nice coffee table. So basically, this whole layout can be uh, equipped with loose furniture. You can play with this space as much as you want. Of course, not only, but the layout itself as well, in case you would use this platform to build a yacht built around your needs. Now, let's go to the wheel station, go quickly through the main equipment. Now, welcome to the wheel station. So, the first thing you will definitely see straight away is these huge screens. Those are basically gaming displays. That was a particular request from the owner. And, of course, you can modify this area as well as the rest of the boat to your wishes. Besides Things that you see, there is something that you will definitely not see. In this case, this is a normal wheel that you would see in the majority of yachts. And in this particular case, we have this small thing that basically helps you maneuver the boat. Now, um, this is a pretty good place to speak about uh, some major technical characteristics uh, of the yacht. Now, this one is equipped with MAN V12, 1650 horsepower each. And at 12 knots, uh, it would give you a range of somewhere under 3,000 nautical miles, consuming about 250 liters on both engines plus generators, which is quite a, a decent amount considering that this yacht is not, is not steel. This is full aluminum semi-displacement yacht. Uh, with uh, the maximum speed of 18 knots. Of course, your captain would definitely appreciate the nice view that opens up from this place on the sea. He can see everything, what is happening on the deck, on the forward part. Besides that, there is a surveillance system that is installed all around the boat that you can basically choose on this screen here and choose the cameras. Now, of course, on this size of a yacht, uh, the captain would not normally stay with uh, the crew because, well, it's, a, it's quite, a, quite, a, quite a big yacht, actually. And in this case, there is a cabin, there's a captain cabin that stays separately from the crew. It's just on your right, which is, should be closed, I think, well, but we will show you the crew quarters later on. Now, obviously, on this size of yacht, you will definitely need these uh, side uh, maneuvering stations, which basically allow the captain to maneuver at all times, when mooring especially. So you have the main levers, you have the bow thruster, you have, a, you have the stern thruster, and there's a little uh, wheel, basically. Now, let's go to the, to the bow part. I'll show you where the tender is. As we remember, the layout of this yacht was uh, thought in a way that the crew is separated completely from the owner, and in this case, it's in the aft. Now, the question is, with longer cruising, you definitely need a tender, and in this case, it's here in the bow. Extended tender, which is 6.5 meter long, with the uh, foldable bow part, in this case, it's completely deflated, and 1,000 kilograms of lifting capacity davit, which basically you can Take your, take your tender from, this, from the starboard side and put it in here. Or otherwise, you can use this space as, in any way as you want. Now, what I really like about this one, and speaking about the navigational characteristics of this yacht, is that you have very high bulwark and uh, you can really see that uh, this yacht can go in any direction and, have, and accomplish any program you would possibly imagine for your holidays. Now this yacht is equipped for five people of crew. On my left there is two cabins with two bunk beds each. And the, as we already mentioned, the captain is upstairs on the upper deck. Now here, this is one of the things that, well, 
many people really require when they start building a yacht with two uh, washing machines and two uh, dryers. Now, as we mentioned, this baby is equipped with two MAN V12, 1650 horsepower each engines. On top of that, as you see these big boys here, these are silences. Now, there was a particular request from the owner to have additional um, ways of uh, ensuring comfort on board and maximum stability and maximum noise reduction, noise and vibration reduction. So that is why you have these huge things over here. Now, on top of that, you have two generators, 55 kilowatt each, curler generators, you have your what to make you have your alternator for 220 volts and 110 volts to use it in the Mediterranean or in the Americas. Here is the electric board 224 and 220 volts. Not always do you, do you see designers of the yachts themselves and today we're very privileged to see and meet the designer Carla Dilliam who is the author of the interior design of this beautiful yacht by Wim van der Valk, Lady Lean. Hello Carla, Hi. very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So can you give us a sense of uh, what was the brief uh, you received from the owner when you started designing this yacht? Yeah, well, the first brief I think it was the most important. Uh, it was that the, this, the yacht needs to be wheelchair friendly. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, they want that everywhere we can have um, handrails and the safety of the yacht it was like very important for them, like for the interior to be everything in curved, mm -hmm. uh, nothing, they didn't want to see edge sharps. Yeah. Um, and this was like the first idea for the layout. And then after that, they uh, it start, we start, it start to talk about uh, the feeling that we want, you know, the, the sensation that we want mm -hmm, for the yacht. Mm -hmm. As they are Brazilians and they love to be in Bahamas, they didn't want anything that was super strong or shiny or yeah. aggressive. Yeah. You no, know? and then we start to work with a palette very calm, very zen. This I think was uh, our first mood board is to give them the sensation that they are uh, at their home, at their beach home and not, uh, you know, in a space that could be aggressive for the eyes. Yeah, yeah. And at the same time, the yacht itself was built also for the Northern Sea. So that kind of gives you a bit of a compromise between, you know, our sturdy but still elegant, our external looking and very warm and calm interiors inside. Good. And were you uh, in? Were you following the owner during across the whole construction stage, like from A to Z? Yes. Yes. It was until like the last day that they received the yacht. We are yeah. following them. Yes. I see. Did you have any like changes along the way that you have to tweak a little bit sometimes? Oh uh, yeah. Some when when you work with a customized yacht, sometimes you have something that you need to change but not too much but yeah. yes we we yeah. have some surprises <laughs> I see. on the way but of course everything we need we can get a solution but yeah i see yes. is there anything special about the materials you used in the interior i know that you have some special marble uh used all around uh, all around decks and cabins uh yeah as we want this sensation to be very clean we try to use like only two or three materials mm -hmm. um, very similar in tones and colors uh, we choose the natural woke yeah. that is very light um, and then we choose a marble that's called silk, silk georgette it is very mm, grayish, but it's not so gray, it's like very calm as well. Mm -hmm. And then as we are using only like little materials, not too much materials, we try to use textures in these materials that you can see that you have the oak, natural, flat, and then you have the same oak, but in fluid, fluted panel. Yeah. Then you have like the chevron pattern, uh, the marble the same way. We use like the, uh, the one that was without textures. Mm -hmm. Then we have the fluted panel on the marble. We're trying to mix a little bit to, we want to be calm, but yeah. not boring. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's like a well, I can say, well, you achieved the goal. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, um, as far as I know, you came originally from residential projects, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So how does it work for you that transition from, uh, from designing houses and just to designing yachts? And as I understand, this is your first big project. Well, 34 is a, is a mm -hmm. pretty big yacht, right? Like, how does it work for you? Is there any difference between designing a home and designing a yacht? Um, yes, well, basically, the, 
um, the core is the same, no? You need to have a theme and then you start to develop, but of course it's a much more detailed process. Mm -hmm. um, as for some clients, I like to design the furniture. Um, this was more close to the product design, more than architecture. It's, it's a mix between product and architecture. Mm -hmm. And I think this is, um, it's, a, it's a, a little bit more um, complicated, yeah. but at the same time, it's more rewarded because you can see exactly what you designed in it's here. For example, mm -hmm. the table, exactly this um, line we yeah. did with this material, we choose every inch of this yacht. And then, of course, at the house, you have more space and then you don't need to be careful, like so millime millimeter yeah, yeah. by millimeter. But super specific with exactly. little details. Yeah. And then we need to, like, you can go and buy furniture. Here we can buy furniture, but it's um, uh, some. Yeah. <laughs> Just some loose furniture. Um, and we try to use, uh, as you do know, inside we have book furniture and then built in furniture. Mm -hmm. We try to change the built in furniture. Yeah. They look for a loose furniture, you yeah. know, with the legs and uh, that you can think that is a loose furniture, but it's not. Yeah. But you need to design everything. This is, I think, it's the, the difference. I see, yeah. I see, I see. So um, I know that probably there is some other projects and the construction or plan to be built in the future. Are you working on larger, bigger, or just different uh, different designs as well? Uh, yeah, well, um, actually we, when we did the late lean, uh, we start to have more requests and mm -hmm. now we have a 65 feet design series, mm -hmm. um, a 25 meters, uh, then another 20 meters and another 34 meters that we are yeah, yeah. we are pretty busy after yeah. late lean, yeah. I see, I see. And uh, from like general perspective, how where do you see do you see the interior design is going? Like in which direction? Because well nowadays a lot of factories, a lot of designers try to make a long lasting design, you know, that has a that holds the resale value in the future as well. And I think well in this perspective you actually achieve that achieve that goal because all well, she's will still be authentic, you know, and then beautiful in five and ten years. So people will still want to have this relaxing feeling inside, right? So what is your take on, on, on the perspective of interior design in this? Yeah, I was actually I was thinking about that because I see that there is a lot of trending now to bring the house inside of the yacht. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I heard from clients this uh, in this festival mm -hmm. that they don't want to feel that they are at home. They want to feel that they are yeah. in a yacht. Yeah. There is a mix uh, that you need to achieve that it still is a yacht and you want to feel that you are not in your home. Yeah. But I think the people want to feel comfortable and happy and relaxed. Yeah. You know, this is, I think, the point that you need to achieve. But it's very hard to think as a car, for example. No, because it's something that there is a production and yeah. then it's a, where is this timeless point that you need to go? It's, it's very hard. It's uh, something that I'm, I'm studying. I see. To, I see. To not be so trendy, you know, ah, now everybody's using fluted panel. Everybody's using yeah. this color, the yeah. green Esmeralda, and then broom, everybody <laughs> use. And then in two years, you need to change everything. Sure. Uh, it's a it's a mix yeah let's see how <laughs> we I can see where we go well yeah. in this in this regards I think you will be one of the trendsetters actually for the future yeah thank you so much for your time it was a thank pleasure you. meeting you thank, thank you, you. Now we hope we re you really enjoyed uh, viewing this beautiful yacht when we truly thank Green Wonder Walk Shipyard for allowing us to take a look at this beauty. Uh, now remind you that uh, Lady Lean is the winner in the category of uh, Custom Yacht of the Year 2022. Hit all the necessary buttons, stay with us and see you in the next one.